This is another common issue with these things. The top of this drum starts to split off. So this is obviously something you don't want. That's why these clutches are burned. And that's why we have all this scarring up in here. Hey everybody, today we're working on a 4R70W. It's out of a 2001 F-150 pickup truck. This was built by Jasper years ago. I believe it stopped moving. So we're gonna take a look and see what's wrong with it and fix this thing up. All right, we're gonna start with taking the tail housing off and if any of you guys have worked on these things, you know that they love to break these bolts. So let's hope we get lucky. Not so bad. Next, the pump bolts. All right, next we got the pan. Another thing to take note of is if you're taking these things out of the car, and you're jacking up against this, you're gonna bend the pan. So what I suggest, and what a lot of people do in the transmission business, they take this four wheel drive pan off and you have an extra two wheel drive pan laying around which sits a lot flatter on the jack. So people typically take them out that way. Oh, we got a nasty mess in here. Ooh, I wish you could smell this thing over a video. It's pretty disgusting. Next, we're going to get this wiring connector out of the way. This gasket's going to get stuck on here, it looks like. Okay, so there's a few things under here that we have to worry about. One is a case connector. You have a third accumulator. Piston and spring. So typically these things are uh, rock hard, this rubber, so you want to change it. It's more disgustingness in here. This is your overdrive band servo. And there's two different designs. Some of them have a sleeve around them. But if you have the sleeve, you always want to get rid of the sleeve and get the bigger piston because that's going to give you more surface area to apply the band. Next, we have one, two accumulator piston. Let's get this gasket out of the way. One two accumulator piston. 
So there's different spring arrangements, so take note of what you have. This has got two springs on top and one large one on the bottom. And this is something we're probably going to mess with later on in the video. All right, we're going to take out this rooster comb and the parking rod assembly because, as you see, there's nowhere for this solenoid to go if you want to remove it. So this all has to come out. So there's a little roll pin in here. And this thing could kind of be a hump. Let's let's hope we uh, get it out easily. Yeah. Got lucky again. Now we can push this back a little bit. Sometimes get better access to this nut. Now we're going to need to pull the pump out. There's, there's a couple ways to do this. There's two bolt holes that are threaded. And some people get in there with a slide hammer and um, pull them out that way. I'm not too much of a fan of the whole slide hammer thing because a lot of times it'll bust the pump or it just doesn't come out right. This will pretty much don't damage things when we use a pump puller. Oh, I hear that gasket sticking and crunching. So predictably, we have a cooked overdrive band, which all of these are going to have. And it usually um, tears up this drum. You can see how this is starting to get brown and glazed. Here we have our second clutch pistons, uh, second clutches. They don't look too terrible. We have a one-way clutch. So as you can hear, that's the mechanical diode style. And um, somebody tried to do a good job here. This is a spiral snap ring, which is out of a front wheel drive GM differential. And there's a little retainer plate. I don't know who makes this, um, Superior, I think is the company. So you put this plate on, you put that spiral snap ring, and then you stake these tabs over so this thing can't pop off, because they do pop off a lot the factory level so this is a reverse input clutch here your driving clutch in reverse and these are usually in fairly decent shape bearing here these are your forward clutches on every time you're moving forward except for in fourth gear they drop off and these are starting to burn and when they burn it's usually not when you put it in gear and they come on, it's usually when you do stuff like four, three downshifts and things like that, because they have to, they're off and forth, they have to come back on and it's got to stop the rotation of everything. Here we have a clutch hub. There's a bearing on either side of it. And you want to look at these splines in here because a lot of times they get a little beat up.
All right, with a sun shell. And as you could see, this is all messed up like something touched down in there. I really don't see anything having touched. Oh, look at this. This is another common issue with these things. The top of this drum starts to split off. So this is obviously something you don't want. That's why these clutches are burned. And that's why we have all this scarring up in here. Take this little shaft out. These things are also a problem. They make aftermarket ones and they even make um, drums that do away with it all together and make it more of a one piece thing. Like in other words, this becomes part of the um, direct drum that's back there. We have a sun gear and you want to look in here really carefully for pitting and things like that because it's kind of very common on these. A little snap ring that holds the support and everything in. All right, so after the snap ring, if it doesn't pull out, there's there's a couple things. There's a little spring that goes in here. Then usually it pulls out. Now the same thing here. You want to check these gears for pitting. Make sure they're not loose. This looks like it has a funny surface on it, like um, somebody took some real coarse sandpaper or maybe a shingle off their roof and tried to sand this thing. But uh, you can't really fix bad parts with sandpaper. Now in here, it's probably the biggest source of problems in these transmissions, which is the... Um, the wreck drum and they make various ways of getting extra clutches in here and they make better drums wow it's trying to pop up like a little jack-in-the-box so these are all coned so that's why it's got this spring effect to it so obviously this clutch pack is leveled, which is, you know, very common when you take one of these apart. Other stuff to look at is on here. There's two bushings that ride on that. You want to make sure there's not ring grooves in the drum like we have here. I don't know if you could see that. That one ring completely ground into there. Got a reverse band. I'm going to change this thing anyway because they break, but it looks like it's in pretty decent shape. There's a bearing back here. Now, if we can look in the case, there's another snap ring down in here. And what that's for is just on the assembly line, when they put these things together, that holds this band from falling back to it because they, they put them together standing up. So you don't have to mess with this. You can just leave that right where it is. So other than that, we're going to take the pump apart. But this has the absolutely common failures that these things all have. So the last thing we have to worry about is the pump here. It's going to have a washer on it and they're different colors and different colors are different thicknesses. It's a selective washer for setting end play.
Okay, this looks a little, a little beat up in here. As you can hear, it's got grooves like a grooves like a record. You know, I could catch a pick on all of them, and you could also look at the outside diameter of the gear. So oftentimes when you have all this metal, it's got nowhere to go. So it it, um, it gets into the torque converter, then it goes from the torque converter to the pump. And it, you know, it's basically not passing through a filter at that point. Also, you have a um, clutch piston in here. But that's about it. I mean, we're going to get further into the tear down, but this is the basic take it apart and inspect it. And obviously we have some issues. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell.